Excellent. Good morning, everybody on the East Coast, and uh, I hope you're having a good Thursday around the world. Um, we've got an exciting presentation for you today. Looking forward and honored to have a member of SAP's product management team with us to discuss what's new in SAP Business Objects 4.2 SP7. Uh, today, my name is Nathan Crook. I'm a senior account director here with uh, 360 Suite, and I also have Pauline Lancaster, Senior Pre-Sales Solution Engineer, 360 Suite. And both of us are honored, like I said, for our special guest, Maheshwar Singh. Maheshwar? Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you so much for taking some time to join us today. Um, Director of Product Management, SAP BI Platform. Um, Maheshwar, I think we're going to just go right in and give you um, give you the floor to take us into what's new. All right, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. All right. All right. Let's get started. Uh, well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, good uh, good day. Uh, my name is Maheshwar. I'm a product manager for the BI platform. So I'm going to talk to you what's new uh, in uh, uh, SAP Business Objects BI 4.2 Service Pack 7. Uh, this presentation is going to be mostly focused on the platform functionalities. Uh, I am not going to cover uh, the client functionalities. I think uh, Webby specifically uh, would be done by Gregory Batachio in the next couple, a few days. Uh, so I think. Uh, so that would cover most of the webby and the semantic layer capabilities so uh, that being said let's let's quickly uh, get into the presentation uh, a standard disclaimer uh, because sp7 is still officially not released uh, it's te uh, it's tentatively expected uh, the end of next month uh, so maybe uh, the last week of february or early march uh, so at this point, we uh, we are having a, a beta program uh, to uh, with some of our customers, and and so hence this disclaimer. Uh, so this is my agenda. I'm gonna talk to you about some install enhancements, uh, the uh, the new BI Launchpad uh, enhancements, and some enhancements on the platform tools uh, that we have. All right. So before we get started, I just want to quickly, uh, you know, uh, talk to you about the timeline. Uh, so uh, if you are on on the BI XI 3.1 version, uh, so uh, the prior one support has uh, ended. Uh, so it it uh, it was on uh, December 31st of 2018. Uh, we we end uh, the prior one support. So uh, XI 3.1 is officially not supported anymore. Uh, the same on 4.2 one uh, the mainstream maintenance is complete uh, with the 4.1 service pack 2 being the last service pack uh, what we have now is about two years of prior one support uh, for 4.1 before it gets end of life uh, so our mainstream product at this point is uh, bi 4.2 uh, service pack 6 is the latest and greatest and with service pack 7 on the way uh, and subsequently you would have service pack 8 Right, uh, so it would be a uh, BI 4.2 would be in maintenance uh, at least up to uh, till the end of 2022, uh, and and then followed by prior one support for about two years. Well, uh, as we are talking about 4.2, the next minor release that we plan to uh, ship uh, is BI 4.3. Uh, at this point, BI 4.3 is uh, would be tentatively RTC or ready to uh, uh, ready to ship. Uh, in the end of uh, this year, uh, Q4 of this year, uh, and and then it gets into the ramp, uh, the ramp up and the beta phase, uh, and post successful completion of that, we expect uh, 4.3 to be generally available uh, in the first half of 2020, uh, and with the mainstream maintenance to continue on till say 2020, 2026 at least. All right. So what this means is that SAP continues to have commitment uh, to its on-prem uh, business intelligence suite. So the BI suite, we continue to invest uh, on our on-prem solution. 
All right. Uh, so as I said earlier, that the uh, 4.3 uh, would be uh, in uh, RTC by end, uh, end of this year uh, and should be generally available uh, by H1 of next year. And so as per our maintenance policy, you could expect maintenance at least up to 2026 uh, for uh, 4.3. Right, and, and we continue to deliver some innovations, enhancements uh, with all the core products that you see. Uh, that's a, whether it's a BI platform, web intelligence, crystal reports, uh, analysis office, or Lumira, or Lumira designer. All right, so, so that's uh, something which I wanted to talk to you, uh, you know, basically uh, reach out, uh, tell you about before we, uh, we get started on the, on the presentation. So can can we have a quick poll check uh, on which uh, version are you using today? Okay, yeah, we just want to know what what versions you're on. We're curious about where everybody is um, with their installations of business objects. Okay, let's we'll give a few more seconds there. We're getting some good responses here. We'll let you know what the results are. Okay, that looks good. Um, we're going to close the poll now. Okay, and share the results. So just to let you know, um, looks like um, the majority of you are on 4.2 SP4 or, or less, um, so that's 35%, and then 4.2 SP5, um, 4.2 SP6, so it looks like about just 12% or so are on 4.1, and it looks like no one's on 4.0, that's good. Um, I'm sure Maheshwar's glad to see that. Okay, so uh, I will, yes. um, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, that, that's, okay. a yep, that's a good yeah, number. Yep, that's a good number. Uh, on, only on folks who are on 4.1, uh, yes, you are on prior one support. Uh, I would recommend you to move to 4.2 uh, because there's a lot of enhancements uh, in 4.2, uh, at least post uh, the service pack 4 release. So there's some great features. I think you would benefit by moving to 4.2. All right. So, I'm gonna All right. So quickly, let's let's. I, I would briefly talk to you about the install uh, enhancement. Uh, so in in install, uh, you know, we we released a new cap. Uh, we released uh, with Service Pack Six a new concept which we call One Installer. So uh, for uh, you know for folks who are on versions prior to Service Pack Six, uh, what One Installer uh, does is is that go, you know with Service Pack Six and and uh, uh, for and onwards uh, we have changed the way we deliver uh, a package or patches uh, so uh, you know previously where you would deliver a service pack from a, a, a separate location and patches from a separate location it no it going forward it would no longer be the case you would have just one installer the installer would be smart enough uh, you know to be aware that uh, it's an update uh, in which case it just deploys the delta files uh, and if you are a fresh install, it is just going to deploy all the binaries. So, the, uh, so this is how it would work. Uh, what this this kind of gives you a benefit of you, uh, you know, you getting directly to a service pack and a patch level in a single step process, uh, uh, unlike previously where it would be a two step process. So it's going to save you some time. Uh, this works perfectly in Windows because of the registry mechanism. Uh, in case of Windows, uh, sorry, in case of uh, any of the Unix flavors, uh, just be just be doubly sure to install the bundle uh, in the same in the same uh, location as as your previous install. Else, it would, uh, you know, if you hadn't, you know, you know deployed it in a separate uh, directory uh, and and it does and you do not have a, a, a business objects deployed there, it's going to do a fresh install. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, so that's something we started with Service Pack 6 and the Service Pack 7, we continue with that process. So it's just one installer going forward. 
Uh, some changes that we have done is basically update some of our third party libraries uh, that uh, that you know is deployed. Uh, so we have updated the uh, SAP JVM version uh, to the latest that's the 8.1. Uh, the default Tomcat has been updated. Okay, one of the question, uh, one of the concerns which a lot of our customers brought up uh, was the uh, the Visual Studio, uh, the VC plus plus 2005 redistributable that we used to bundle. Uh, so there were concerns on vulnerability and it's uh, you know it being end of life. So with service, if you do a fresh install of Service Pack 7, uh, this uh, VC 2005 would not be deployed. Uh, in in you know in in the in your install. Now, if you are somebody, who, if you are a cus, if you are a user who's updating from a older service pack or a patch to service pack seven, the uh, the Visual Studio, uh, the Visual Studio, or the VC plus plus libraries continue to exist uh, in your installer. Uh, sorry, in, uh, continues to be uh, exist in that system. Uh, but you have an option to uninstall that, and and you know your so this uh, software continues to perform as 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 expected, right? Uh, the uh, the visual uh, the VC two thousand uh, VC plus plus two thousand five uh, primarily was deployed for two main reasons. Uh, one was a SiteMinder version that we had uh, previously as an older version, which had a dependency on uh, on on this two thousand five libraries. Uh, with the new update to uh, SiteMinder uh, 12.52, uh, we don't have that dependency anymore. Uh, so that's which is a good thing. Uh, ex so the only case where uh, you know the uh, you have a dependency on the 2005 li libraries is if you use SAP JCO. That's the only case uh, where we, you would need uh, to have uh, this 2005 libraries. Uh, if you do a fresh deploy of, uh, you know, SP7 2005 is not deployed by default. But if you decide to use Jacob, uh, then the, uh, you know, then you are asked to uh, basically deploy those files additionally. So the SAP, uh, the SAP note uh, refers to those, uh, the, to those, uh, you know, constraints. Uh, the web application container so, uh, server that we have, uh, which is basically a bundled uh, Tomcat uh, application in it. Uh, has been updated as well uh, to the 7.0 uh, version. Okay, so those were the the installer changes that you could expect with Service Pack 7. Uh, and now quickly moving on to the Fury like uh, BI Launchpad. Uh, so uh, the Fury like uh, BI Launchpad is is our focus area. So you would see us enhancing, uh, you know, capabilities there, uh, making it in par with the uh, with the classic Launchpad. Uh, the idea is to replace uh, the classic launchpad with this new uh, Fiori like BI launchpad in uh, in service uh, in 4.3. So uh, in service pack seven, uh, we have uh, you, you know we have uh, in introduced some new uh, enhancements uh, to the launchpad. Uh, so so uh, you know options to be able to support preferences, co column customizations, uh, being able to set some custom options for a user for, uh, at the user user group level from the CMC. Uh, some additional preferences which can be done on the launch pad as well. Uh, some customization and branding. Uh, this was an ask from a few of our customers uh, because we support customization and branding on the classic launch pad. Uh, we want uh, and they were expected a similar capability uh, on the new launch pad as well. Uh, schedule enhancements. Uh, we, we did a few. Uh, being able to view a BI workspace uh, and and uh, some incremental improvements as well. Uh, we I would talk to you in a little more detail in subsequent slides. So this is uh, the option of supporting uh, preferences at the uh, at the user group level on the CMC. Uh, so this you know we introduce an option similar to uh, what the classic uh, BI Launchpad has. So on the C when you when you log uh, when you go into the CMC on the user groups. Uh, you right click on that you have you previously we had only a BI launchpad preferences So with service pack 7 you have a fury BI launchpad preferences as well So when you select that uh, you get an option to config uh, to customize uh, You know your landing pages uh, The tab that it needs to be enabled uh, You also can decide if, the, if there's a specific uh, report uh, that you need uh, you know uh, launched by default 
uh, or even you know select a category uh, on to on which uh, you know it needs to be focused on uh, additionally we introduced options where you can customize the columns uh, that you would see in the new launch pad uh, so, uh, so we introduced some options there uh, especially uh, on the last run uh, and even the last update uh, this does not uh, did not exist in the old uh, launch pad but we introduced it uh, in the newer one so which kind of tells you uh, you could even you know look at uh, you could have a listing by uh, the last update uh, on, on the document so you have all of this option so you can customize uh, your launch pad so uh, so basically you could do all of these options you know you can you can select which uh, the columns that you would like to see uh, on in the in the launch pad sorry let, let's go get quickly get into additional preferences now uh, that this the settings that you saw previously is something which it or the admin could do for the uh, for a user group uh, or or uh, you know a user from the cmc now when a user launch uh, uh, you know logs into the launch pad uh, and if he is enabled uh, if he has the right to change uh, the preferences uh, he could also do so from the from his launch pad so you could change something uh, you could uh, you know extend or enable a few more options uh, from within the launch pad for himself uh, in in addition to what the it or the admin has given to him so you could also customize it based on his uh, uh, you know uh, based on his rights that he has so he he could decide uh, you know what would be he, uh, the home uh, you know the landing page the home tab that he needs to go to uh, or, or uh, even the columns that he wants to uh, enable or disable, so he could do, he could customize it uh, as per his need as well. <clears throat> okay, so one of the uh, strong asks we had was being able to support, uh, you know, the customization and branding uh, for the Fury, uh, you know, for the Fury like BI Launchpad. Uh, we we did support uh, customizing and branding on the old classic launch pad for quite a while uh it's it's been there for the past four years or so already so we wanted to create a similar uh, capability <coughs> what what we did additionally uh, is you know the, whereas in the old launch pad you would have to actually uh, you know you would have to uh, open a few css files edit them uh, and then deploy them and then check uh, if if the changes were as per your need uh, what we did uh, for for the fury uh, uh, like the launch pad is that we created a small application for you once this application is deployed uh, you kind of can uh, you know you have a more ui based uh, you know experience where you could change this so this is an application that you see uh, it's like a theme designer so you can actually uh, you can decide uh, the, the elements that you want to change and you can actually see it real time there right so it, it's it's based on a stat on a static uh, display and and, and uh, as you change uh, those parameters or the or the colors or the, or the fonts uh, or any of the, or you decide to change the company logo it kind of replaces it real uh, it kind of replaces it and shows you uh, and kind of show, pre gives you a preview of how it's going to look like all right uh, so this is a quick uh, screenshot uh, and you could also change uh, like you know even the text colors uh, or, or the way the icon looks uh, you know the, you know the colors of the icon and once you're configured and you think this is what this is how it looks good uh, you have an option to download those files so this download of uh, the file gets downloaded as an uh, uh, you know basically as, as a zip file uh, which has all the, all the required uh, you know CSS in it. Uh, you you just need to copy those into appropriate folders and deploy them. Okay. Now uh, you could also uh, you could also re-upload that file that you have downloaded and then continue to modify it or up change it. Uh, you know based on uh, either a new standard that your company has or or you know wanted to change your logo for example. You could redo that same thing. Could update that existing file as well and redeploy it again. Uh, so this is more in terms of flexibility and, and uh, you know more visual thing. Uh, so 
here are some steps that you would do. What we did is we introduced a war file, a theme designer dot war file uh, that would exist in your collaterals folder. So uh, you you would have to go to your install uh, uh, you know inst install location and and look at a collaterals folder. Uh, you would find a new war file there. You need to de deploy this on your app server. Once once a once the deploy is done. Uh, you know, you would have to launch it uh, as, as we, uh, it's basically the host name, the HTTP port uh, slash theme designer. Now, once a theme designer is launched, uh, you have the, uh, you know, you have the ability to customize all the launchpad tabs and also have a preview option there. Uh, you could some of the customization capabilities uh, includes like, you know, being able to change your logo. The, <laughs> The logo that exists, you could change that. Uh, the branding color, uh, the background image uh, that that you see in your home screen can also be changed. Uh, you could change the, even the opacity. Uh, you know, you could you could do the icon color, the uh, hover color, uh, and even the title text color, or or that uh, you know, or even the text color. So all of these changes could be done once you have done all of those. Uh, you basically can save the file. You download that file uh, to save it locally. Now that it's a zip file, so basically it has all the theme CSS, uh, CSS file, uh, the company logo as a PNG file, the background if it exists, the PNG file. So all of those would be, uh, you know, basically given to you as a in a zip file. You can re-upload that zip file uh, at some point of time uh, to, you know, modify it again if required, right? Uh, the downloaded zip file basically you, you would copy it in those uh, those specific location into the custom CSS folder uh, and then deploy it. Uh, you will have to modify that uh, there's a uh, in the uh, Fiore BI properties uh, you would have to uh, modify this a parameter you'll have to say uh, you will have to change that uh, value uh, to the custom right once you've done that you basically run the uh, w deploy option uh, command again uh, you know and 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 then once once you deploy this uh, file uh, once you deploy the updated file uh, the launch pad basically would uh, would kind of reflect the new theme that you have deployed so it uses the custom css file post that deploy right uh, <clears throat> additionally we also support some uh, branding care changes like uh, you know, if I ha you had the BI Launchpad uh, as as an application, uh, and you wanted to give it a different name or a more user friendly name, uh, or you wanted to change the greeting, so you could change all of that. You could give it a short name, for example. So some of those changes also is possible. So uh, this is uh, you know this uh, the branding and customizing uh, is has been introduced for the first time in Service Pack Seven. Uh, we would continue to enhance it based on uh, cus uh, our, the customer feedbacks uh, or on ideas being uh, you know posted at the idea place or the influence site uh, and and based on the number of votes that we see uh, we would take those on priority right uh, so so that's that's with the cust uh, the uh, the customization and branding uh, capability that's been introduced in service pack 7 uh, on for uh, in the Fiori uh, like BI Launchpad, uh, we also did some uh, enhancements to the schedule page. Uh, pr uh, previously, you could not do. Uh, we did not support a reschedule option. Uh, so since uh, you know, so we caught up on that capability with Service Pack Seven. Uh, you can actually do multi-select uh, on both the schedule tab and the history page. Uh, reschedule option is supported both on the schedule tab and the history page. Uh, failed status is displayed on the details pane. So some usability enhancements have been done there. Uh, the default value of refer, uh, recurrence that's configured in the CMC, it's reflect it reflects in the B, uh, in the uh, BI Launchpad schedule page as well. So we kind of did some enhance uh, some usability enhancements uh, and some functional catch up uh, on the schedule page. On the on the schedule cap uh, functionality on the Fiori uh, uh, Launchpad. Okay, we also now <clears throat> we support uh, viewing and interacting with an existing uh, BI workspace that was that has been uh, that has been created say with the with the classic 
uh, or the uh, with the classic launch pad so all the so, uh, so bi workspace and some modules uh, is supported in the new unified viewer uh, way uh, some some enhancements that we have also done uh, you know with service pack 6 and later uh, in service pack 6 specifically is that uh, the bi workspace used some flash uh, in content linking page so we kind of got rid of uh, flash from that uh, page as well so uh, we did some cleanup on of uh, to get rid of flash uh, we mostly rid of flash uh, from the platform a platform perspective with service pack 6 so there's no longer there's mostly no flash uh, uh, in the platform uh, except for the client components uh, that's the uh, the uh, dashboard or, or explorer which uses flash uh, but on the platform we, we are mostly clean uh, in terms of flash usage now <clears throat> uh, again so, uh, uh, some uh, enhancements on on the uh, on the fury uh, launchpad is that hyperlink creation uh, cre uh, being able to create a hyperlink or view uh, is something is now supported so uh, previously we supported uh, we had you could view but you could not create now we support even create a views uh, for for hyperlink sorry uh, so hyperlinks uh, creation is supported uh, in service pack 7 uh, hyperlinks uh, supported are, uh, has to be only http we don't support https for now <clears throat> same uh, hyperlink folder can also be created uh, and basically you can use that to launch uh, you know basically uh, to go to that specific folder uh, similarly it supports for category as well uh, and on, on on the hyperlink for folder we support both uh, personal and public folders so both of those are supported uh, <clears throat> some other uh, additional enhancement these are minor enhancements or or customer requests that we had uh, you know one of them was that open doc uh, when it times out would not give you a, 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 a any uh, error message or warning uh, that it's about to time out uh, so we kind of fixed that problem uh, and now, uh, you know, even if you launch, uh, you know, you launch a, a, a document via a open doc URL, uh, and if the document and if that, uh, you know, the URL is idle, there's there's no action, uh, there's no uh, user action there. Uh, based on the uh, if your default timeout is set set to 20 minutes, uh, on on about 18 minutes approximately, uh, you know, you you would get a pop up which tells you that. Uh, you know this session is going to expire in the next two minutes and do you want to continue uh, if you do not do any interactions even post that it would even remind you once more saying that you know you got only one minute left uh, and post that uh, it simply tells you the session has expired uh, kind of gives you a good feedback uh, so you know because uh, a lot of times you kind of get uh, input from a customer uh, from your you end user that it stopped working or takes you to the log uh, uh, login page so you don't want to do that i think this uh, is a lot cleaner so we kind of support this uh, use case now <clears throat> and and uh, we expire that session there uh, another uh, this is more of a certification that we did <clears throat> is that with us uh, with uh, bi uh, 4.2 service pack 4 and later uh, we started supporting uh, you know the saml uh, sso uh, <clears throat> right now we support saml 2 uh, and and previously we had certified it for uh, you know the other app server so we support for tomcat websphere and uh, netviewer uh, and uh, in service pack 7 we also certified it for jboss uh, now, uh, <clears throat> similar to how we support SAML SSO, uh, we also, uh, you know, with Service Pack 4, uh, we introduced an option where, uh, you know, prior to Service Pack 4, uh, the REST API would by default always be, uh, would only be deployed uh, in the web application container service. So that's where the, uh, the, uh, the REST services would be deployed. With Service Pack 4 and, and now and later, uh, the uh, rest uh, apis could be deployed optionally either uh, on on the web application container service uh, or on any supported uh, you know the standard application server that you have for example tomcat uh, 
Uh, so the rest uh, could exist both on, on could be deployed on Tomcat. Uh, all you need to do is change the URL uh, uh, for your REST service, and uh, you know it stops using the web uh, the wax, uh, and instead would uh, be uh, you know basically consumes the uh, the REST API that uh, the REST service that's deployed on 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 your on the uh, default Tomcat. Uh, the advantage of that is you know if Tomcat is clustered, uh, REST also uh, you know basically has uh, better scalability uh, you know uh, capabilities there. So that's that's something which we introduced. Uh, so REST, uh, uh, the REST API can or uh, and uh, SAML uh, both are now supported on all all of these app servers, right? Uh, this is <clears throat> uh, the, so. This is a quick flowchart. So uh, basically, what happens is, is, you know, any from any IDP that's a, a SAML uh, assertion is sent, uh, and and uh, you know it it's sent to the app server. Uh, the app server now validates uh, it, and and then from the app server onto the BI uh, uh, from to the BI server. That's a backend. Uh, it's a trust-based authentication. So just to be sure, uh, you know, just so that you are aware, uh, so the credentials have to map uh, or have to match. Sorry. Uh, so just something to be aware of. Uh, other minor enhancement are, is that you can now do a full name search. Uh, unlike previously, we could only do a search by the username, uh, but now you could do a search e either by the username or a full name search. So even that's possible. So it filters on both uh, username and full name. Okay. Uh, we also now support HANA multi-tenant. <clears throat> so when you configure, uh, you know, the HANA authentication, so you have two options. Uh, like previously, you could only do the HANA, uh, the host name and the port. Uh, now we introduce some additional options where you could do either the host name and port or option of, you know, se selecting the host name uh instance and the tenant so you could uh, you could do it as a com uh, you could do a, uh, you could select in either of those so with hana 2.0 you can now uh, we support uh, the multi-tenanting option as well uh, from within boe right uh, so uh, now quickly on to the second uh, on to poll number two on poll number two that's right maheshwar we've got uh Besides business objects, are you using any other analytic solutions to tackle your analytic needs? And so we've listed a couple of uh, couple of vendors there. If other, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, in the questions, mentioning which other uh, solution it is that you're uh, leveraging, that would be interesting. And and not to worry, we see there are actually you guys are are creating a ton of great questions in the question areas. Uh, Maheshwar is going to get to those just as soon as we get to the end of the presentation. So uh, hang on, we'll, we'll definitely get there. Uh, okay, just uh, a few more seconds to let, let everyone answer. Slowly but surely, we've got people coming in. Ah, it's interesting. I, I think you're going to find these uh, Okay. All right. So we're going to close the poll. Yep. And uh, share the results. And so it looks like uh, there's actually a 15% SAP Analytics Cloud uh, note out there. That's awesome. Um, would love to see feedback on how you're using that, how you're finding it uh, into the, the questions area. Um, Tableau and Power BI almost neck and neck. And uh, click bringing up uh, in the middle there, and 22% other. So I'm assuming we'll see some answers coming in through there. But uh, very interesting. Uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you participating. So Maheshwar, back uh, back to you, sir. Yep. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, yep. I I, th I think the uh, the idea of 15% of uh, SAP Analytics Cloud uh, being used along with business objects is very interesting. Uh, yes. You know, we have we have some ideas around hybrid uh, of you know being able to cross consume artifacts or content. Uh, you know, if any of you have use cases something or something of interest, I would be very ha uh, you know happy to hear those uh, because 
you know we that's a focus area for us as well to to have these two solutions work uh, closely with each other mm. so the interoperability would be better absolutely yeah. all right so now lastly moving on to the platform tools <clears throat> Uh, so uh, in service packs, uh, in promotion management, uh, I think this again was uh, more of a customer request uh, and, and some, uh, you know, I uh, asked uh, some quite a lot few words on the influence side. So we decided to do this uh, is that, uh, you know, in the promotion management, when you promote uh, content and uh, in, with security from, say, a source to a target, uh, there was also asked to uh, basically move or promote even the uh, the uh, user group bi preferences uh, the idea of you know even also taking in some of those preferences uh, from source to target so you have, have uh, the same replication happening uh, was asked for uh, and so we kind of created this option so this is optional uh, if you decide to take the preferences the user group uh, preferences uh, from source to target uh, you could now do that uh, previously you would have to redo them manually uh, now we kind of give you a promotion option uh, so that uh, this override uh, all right uh, on, on on the uh, in the target system uh, to make it identical to the source system okay uh, <clears throat> we also uh, support uh, now uh, promotion of overrides uh, via cts plus so uh, you know if you have configured uh, the uh, cts plus uh, and and previously only moving uh, the bi con uh, bi and the uh, bi and the bw contents in a transport from uh, a source to a target system uh, with service pack 7 we also support uh, the uh, the, uh, the transport of uh, overrides uh, from source to target uh, in in the uh, in this same bundle uh, so overrides is basically uh, you know uh, it, we create a, a file at the back end uh, which scans to all the connections in the source system, uh, identifies the, uh, by the name of the connection and, and tells you the uh, the username uh, credentials uh, and gives you an option to update them into the target system uh, without uh, you know manually uh, logging in uh, to the target. So it kind of uh, promote. So while the promotion manager commits the object uh, uh, prior to committing the object, it can uh, if the override is enabled. Uh, it makes sure that it updates the connection values before it promotes it. So you don't have to physically uh, log into the target system and change them. It uh, The system does it for you. Right. Uh, uh, another thing that we have enhanced is monitoring. Uh, so monitoring, uh, which used to be flash based uh, from service uh, in service pack six, we got rid of flash. Uh, so uh, now uh, monitoring in so, so in service pack six and later uh, is uh, HTML5 based, so it's no longer Flash. Uh, we can, uh, and in service pack seven we did some uh, performance improvements. Uh, so this uh, so this considerable performance improvement uh, compared to uh, the service pack six uh, release. So whether it's loading the page or, or there were some uh, you know basically some performance issues when the number of objects in a repository uh, ex, uh, you know exceeded say 200,000 objects or even more uh, so we kind of fixed a lot of those performance issues so monitoring now is a lot more is quite performant uh, when compared to uh, to the previous uh, release uh, we also did some B, uh, bt token uh, enhancement uh, so just to make sure that this, uh, you know the query being sent is secure uh, so some enhancements on the security side as well has been done uh, so monitoring is now uh, is now uh, without flash it's not it's non flash uh, so that it has no dependency on flash uh, it's on ui uh, it's html5 only uh, <clears throat> and and so that's a major change uh, that you would see okay uh, the oh, another thing that we did you know this was released uh, in service pack six, uh, in service pack six, we released what something. Uh, uh, we released a new uh, product or, or a new functionality which we call the automation framework. Uh, automation framework was uh, you know 
basically would create a scenario uh, using the uh, using the SDK, uh, which helps you automate some tasks. Uh, it could be in case of uh, changing uh, the owners of of a bunch of schedules and one in in a single instance, uh, where you can list out those schedules and then change that, uh, or being able to uh, you know automatic uh, being able to uh, move. Uh, or reconnect or repoint a web document which is uh, you know connected to a unv uh, to a unx so, so it could do that conversion and the repointing all all in uh, you know all via a process for you so you don't need to manually do it so it would identify all the uh, it would uh, look for the web documents identify the unvs that it's using uh, and then uh, you know repoint itself uh, convert the unv to a unx and then make sure that all the web documents which were previously pointed to this UNV would now point to the new UNX. Uh, so that's something which we did. Uh, we also we you can also do a uh, you know it also does some additional capabilities like uh, you know you had a web document which is looking at an old UNX you wanted to repoint it to a new UNX that you create so you can actually do that mapping as well UNX to UNX mapping uh, or uh, even a UNV to a BW query. Uh, mapping so uh, so we support uh, now uh, we can directly connect to a uh, to a bw query uh, whereas previously we used to go via uh, you uh, via universe so now if you want to have that directly done uh, you know this automation framework would help you in those scenarios so we created uh, we came up with a bunch of templates there uh, which can be used uh, what we did in service pack 7 is that uh, you know when it executes a lot of time uh, you know, uh, we had some customers asking us can you all can i also get an email uh, that lets me know what is the status of uh, of the task that was run was it a success or was it a failure for example so we kind of gave them we now support uh, even a email notification at the end of that uh, uh, you know the execution of a of a task uh, or or a scenario that's done so this is some uh, some uh, a new uh, you know capability we introduced uh, uh, in service pack 6 and in service pack 7 we're enhancing enhancing it uh, with email notification as well uh, so with that uh, i come to the end of my presentation uh, nathan back to you yeah thank you maheshwar that was awesome um, can't wait to dig into some of these questions and uh, just briefly while we wrap things up, uh, you know, taking advantage of uh, 4.2 SP7, of course, that means that you're going to need to upgrade and uh, migrate to the latest version. And so Pauline and I have put together just a quick um, 10 steps around the 360 suite uh, and how you can leverage uh, the 360 suite to, to help move uh, into the latest version, take care, take advantage of all these uh, these nice features, and uh, how to do so with less risk, uh, greater visibility into the to the landscape that you have, and uh, also to do that as quickly as possible. And so the first step um, is how do we prepare? So Pauline, right. So the 360 suite that you can do an assessment of your environment to get an idea of of uh, what your content is. Do you have a number of users that haven't logged in in, in a period of time? Maybe you, you know, we, we see customers that have thousands of users that might not have logged in in the past two years. Does it make sense to keep them and migrate their content? Uh, maybe you have reports that haven't been run in a time, um, you know, period of time. So being able to get an assessment of, you know, where is your content? Is it inboxes? Is it, is it instances? Is it personal folders? And um, what's the, the status? You know, are these, this, is this content all being used? Uh, so that's the first step. Yeah, absolutely. And so once you've got a good documentation of exactly what you have, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are you would really like to take the step of, all right, how do we make this uh, more environment more efficient and uh, clean up what we don't need before we have to move all this content into new servers or new systems, et cetera. And so that's where step, um, jumped into step three it's backup <laughs> number two is actually the backup piece right so the yeah so 360 suite we have a solution that allows you to back up all of your content um, the backup is incremental so the first time you get a full backup and then the subsequent backups 
um, just back up anything that's been added or modified. This gives you a quick and easy way to restore anything if it's been deleted or even to roll back if you need to go to a previous version so something changed and you didn't um, want to get back to that previous version. You can also use that backup um, to easily uh, um, set up a DR uh, site. We have uh, jobs that will let you um, create a, a backup restore job um, to quickly uh, create a DR site or even just to recreate an environment that looks just like another environment. Um, so this gives you an easy solution for, you, for your backups with business objects. Absolutely. And so once you can sleep at night uh, and during the day while, <laughs> while everything's going on um, with your backup, you want to make, maybe clean up that content like I uh, was discussing about pinpointing. Right. So finding with, with the 360 suite, you can find where your where those reports are, where there's unused reports that they haven't been run in, in two years, um, un, unused universe objects, maybe duplicated reports. A lot of times they find, you know, um, users will copy reports from public folders into their personal folders and you find copies of reports all over the place. So being able to pinpoint those and, and minimize the content so it will make your upgrade more successful, um, eliminate any, any risk, and will definitely speed it up as well. Exactly. And now that you've got uh, an actual list of all of the content that you're looking to um, clean up, how do you do so efficiently? And that's where uh, step number four comes into play. Right. So, yeah, say you generate a list of thousands of reports. I recently helped a customer that had um, 30,000 um, instances and inboxes and, and reports that they wanted to clean up. And, um, you know, there isn't a quick and easy way to do that. With 360 Suite, you uh, just provide um, an Excel spreadsheet with the list of, um, of objects you want to purge. Um, it will delete those um, in bulk. Um, run it and, and you can get your results um, as to what was deleted. And of course, you have your backup. So if for some reason somebody said, oh, I actually run that report every three years, I need to get that back, you can quickly restore that um, if needed. And so, the, you know, w once you've cleaned up your, your system and you've got a real good understanding of how people are using the system, what your concurrency is, what your named user uh, realistic usage is, a lot of times people will be reviewing with SAP, how, how can I uh, right size the licensing that I have with business objects and balance that with something like the offer around hybrid um, for SAP Analytic Cloud or, or some other aspect of your SAP landscape. And so this will give you the exact information you're going to need in order to, yeah, to you know, deliver the functionality your organization is taking advantage of, and then also take advantage of money you've already spent to uh, to to dig into new things and uh, create better value out of the money that you're spending on uh, on the solutions that you have. So that brings us around to uh, number six around qualify. So this this to me is one of the most important pieces. Uh, there's you know two aspects I think that take the most time of any sort of upgrade or migration effort with regard to managing it, really any technology. And, and one is to document everything and understand what we're going to do. And then the second piece is how do we test once we've moved or once we've uh, decided that we're you know taking content into a new system, you know, how do we test all of that? How do we make sure that the reports we've moved, we can then again push that into production and our users can trust that the uh, data and uh, the report and information are all correct. And so that uh, that brings us to 360 Suite Qualify. Right, so we have a solution in 360 Suite that will allow you to, to run your report. So before you um, install SP7, um, so maybe you're in 4.2 SP3 or SP4, um, you run all of your reports, you get your results, you select a, a set of reports that you want to, to um, test, run that same set of reports in SP7, and this will do a comparison, so an exact comparison of all the data, the structure, um, you select what you want to compare, um, and it will highlight any differences and email you the results so you, you are com you know, confident that where there are differences, you can go and, and look to see what needs to be changed or um, you're confident that, that the um, upgrade hasn't made any changes or um, negative impact on your reports. 
And uh, I mean, hugely valuable to a lot of our customers today, simply by being able to um, being able to deliver 100% confidence to your end users that things are going to be working and delivering exactly what they're expecting. It's priceless. So c compare, and uh, this is more on the uh, the technical side of comparing once you've uh, got a source and a target um, that you've moved everything. So. Right, so you can um, quickly and easily compare, make sure you know all of your users got moved, all your reports, your universes, your connections. So there are a number of um, reports that will give that information, so that you're confident that everything got got migrated um, to to SP7. And absolutely, and so part of the process that we see around uh, once you've uh, done testing on the reports is impact analysis. So understanding, you know, are, are the BEX queries or the universes or are the uh, variables or uh, you know, anything that's causing a regression between the two versions that you have in place, um, what specifically is the impact to my environment? You know, how many reports exactly are going to be affected by the regression that I see in my testing? And this gives you the ability to dig in and understand, it, you know, precisely how many reports do I need to uh, to be able to uh, you know address in order to make sure that that's not going to be an impact to to my users right so these yeah these reports will give you a quick way so maybe it's a syntax and a report variable that needs to be updated and um, you've you know you've tested you found the reports that contain that but there are oftentimes the ones that you selected with your testing, there are oftentimes more reports. Maybe you've only looked at public folders. You want to also look into the, the user folders and see where else that syntax might be used, or the universe object, whatever it is. Um, and these impact analysis reports will give you all of that in information so that you can resolve any issues with any of the reports in the environment. Absolutely. And and so that brings us to promote. And this this particular piece I find has been hugely valuable to a lot of our customers that who are standing up, especially parallel environments where you're, you know, looking at new architecture. Um, you know, take us in here, uh, Pauline. All right. Um, so yeah, like like Maheshwar said, um, there are some things that are changing with SP7. I uh, mean, the uh, Visual Studio libraries are removing. So, um, and oftentimes SAP does recommend to actually install a fresh fresh install. So typically you'll have your you know your old environment and then your new install of SP7. So you want to promote all that content from um, your old environment to um, to SP7. And while you're while you're testing the the upgrades, so you're testing SB7. You know, users are still in production; they're creating reports. Um, you know things are getting updated. Developers are are updating universes. Um, so oftentimes you need to keep those in sync. 360 Suite has a solution where you can easily, once you've done that promotion, you can actually do a delta promotion, so it keeps everything in sync um, as you're continuing to uh, test the upgrade, so that when you do switch over to the the uh, new environment, um, the upgrade, the SP7 environment, it's an easy switch. You don't have to go through the full, full blown uh, promotion again. Um, so that's definitely a time saver. Yeah, a huge time saver. So, the, you know, finally, that brings us to secure. And, um, you know, as each of you have been longtime business objects people, or maybe you're, you're relatively new, you know, a lot of this can be uh, molded to, you know, get to. Um, the, the process that fits what you're trying to accomplish, but ultimately um, what each of these pieces is around, uh, you know, giving you a roadmap to help you, uh, you know, accomplish the, the, the upgrade or the, the migration in a very safe and effective manner. So finally secure, um, being able to leverage the 360 suite around security. Right, so we have a unique security matrix that allows you to document your security. Um, you can even compare security from before the upgrade to after, what it looked like um, to see if there were anything that was anything has changed. Um, you can visually see, you know, all the folders, what access levels have been granted to which groups, as, as well as the universes. All, all the security can can be documented if you have for auditing purposes or just to to validate that everything's been set up correctly. Absolutely. So that brings us to the uh, 
end of uh, 360 suite, I just want to launch um, our polling. Would you mind launching the last poll? So this is just uh, would, would, if if we can help in any way uh, with questions after your, uh, the, the the presentation is done, please just let us know. Um, we're happy to do so. I want to make sure that we're supporting you out there. Um, so the uh, let's dig into questions, uh, Maheshwar. We've got a ton, so I'm going to hop into uh, to the very first one here that we haven't answered, and, and that is from Anthony Gaskin. So how is the one installer different from asking for a bundled software? And while you're answering that, uh, Pauline, actually, go, go back one. Oh, OK, sorry. It's OK. Maheshwar, you may be on mute. Uh, you want to unclick your mute button? Can you hear me? Did we lose? Uh, yeah, there we yeah. are. There we are. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, well, the one installer is an extension to the bundle software uh, because previously you would have to request for it. Uh, now one installer is available out of the box so you get that by default uh, and one installer is an extension to uh, to the previous bundled software bundled software that you could request uh, in this in the sense that it could uh, it also supports uh, for a fresh install as well so it's an extension uh, to, to the to the previous offering awesome uh, hello kim good to see you out there um, smart install. How does this work for a cluster? Is this a single install from each CMS? Uh, well, uh, the the process uh, would still say the same. So you don't change the process. It's uh, it's just that uh, the installer would uh, would make sure would check for the appropriate binaries and update them uh, as it finds in that system. All right, next question we got here from Pradeep. So we are currently on 4.2 SP5. Can we use one installer so that it would gather plus the latest patches? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so with one installer, you can directly go to uh, uh, service pack six, patch, any uh, any patch, patch three, four, uh, you could directly go there. Uh, it should, it would, uh, It would take you there. Excellent. That's good. On you. So another one from Anthony is: uh, Will the install be updated so that the previous installs are removed? The Linux version is installed, uh, similar to how Lumira client is installed, having to go back to 4.1 install base, update to 4.2 software. Uh, well, uh, well, what what we plan to do uh, in a future version is to uh, you know. Uh, provide you with a utility uh, which will help you, uh, you know, uh, remove uh, some of the old installers from your system. You know, it could be a cache uh, removal tool uh, which could remove all the old installed cache uh, that's stored in your uh, in your hard disk. So we we are working on provide creating a utility uh, which which would support such scenario. Okay. All right. Next question is: uh, Will Fiori Launchpad support publication creations in SP7? Uh, uh, not uh, not in SP7, but in 4.3, uh, we would uh, support publications as well, uh, both creation uh, and and execution of it as well, uh, and also maybe even content creation would be possible there. Nice. And uh, evidently something really uh, resonated with Ruel. Um, he said, finally, smiley face. So you, you're, you're on the right track with with uh, <laughs> with something along in that line. Um, another from Pradeep, will we get recording of the webinar later today, tomorrow? The answer is yes, the recording will be made available. Uh, everybody was asking about the presentation uh, as well. And I had mentioned that is that correct? Sorry, that oh. I'm sorry, I missed that. 
I, a lot of people were asking about the uh, the physical presentation, like the, the PDF of the presentation, and I had mentioned in chat that uh, it would be available after GA of uh, SP7. Yes. Is that that's correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, all right, and can Fiori be used to modify report? Okay, we answered that. Uh, is it possible to use token to connect to Fiori BI Launchpad? Uh, I would say no, no at this point. Uh, we, we are in the process of working on that. Okay. Will SAP JVM uh, support other browsers like Chrome and Firefox? Uh, will SAP JVM support? Uh, we we do certify uh, you know Firefox uh, in our PAM uh, and also Chrome, uh, so they are certified. Uh, you know you you could refer to the PAM. Uh, for uh, for any of the latest updates that we do, uh, the PAM has the has, has all the certified browser list. And will that include SP7 as well? Yep, yep. We we would okay. be publishing. Yeah, we would update the uh, the PAM uh, for Service Pack Seven uh, because we have certified uh, some of the uh, latest versions of both the browsers and some of, and OS as well. So. Uh, please always refer to the PAM for the latest info. Hey, uh, Brian, I see you out there. Um, for Fiori BILP uh, global settings, would it be helpful, or it would be helpful if you provide recommended size for the logo and the background image. Is, is that information available? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we we would document uh, the uh, the size uh, for the logo or uh, the preferred size for the logo. Yes, we would uh, we would document that. And and we 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 would see uh, we would also try to maybe create a blog. Uh, you know, with a set uh, in in sequence, so it's easier uh, for you to refer. So we will try to create a blog and and publish it at the time uh, the uh, service pack seven is uh, available. Perfect. So uh, we've got another question. We actually got so many questions, and I know we're we're running over. Uh, Ashbar, would you like to continue answering questions, or should we follow up the? Uh, what's your time? Uh, well, uh, I, I uh, well, uh, Nathan, you could also email me those questions, and I'll make sure I answer all of them, and 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 I send them back to you, and you could actually share it with the audience. I tell you what, I think in the interest of time, we'll, we'll continue down that uh, down that path. And everybody, we've got the slide up. So what's new in SAP 4.2 SP7 Web Intelligence Semantic Layer is next week, January 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, for Pauline, Maheshwar, uh, and myself, I want to just say thank you so much for uh, joining and participating. There's a ton of great questions. And uh, we'll follow up uh, accordingly with each of uh, each of the questions and answers uh, to everybody here on the uh, on the webinar. Yep. Finally, there's an exit survey. If you'll help us improve, we want to make sure you're getting the most out of this. And um, thank you again, Maheshwar, Pauline. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.